some people I haven't seen in a long time. Nice to see you too. Crystal. I see John Rocket. So Good evening, John Rocket. Good evening. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Good. Hey, Mike. Crystal, it's been a long time since I've seen you. I think several projects ago. I know. It's good to know that we show up at the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think we are. I'm trying to figure out what the options here are for the for the um, <laughs> for the NCAA bracket. I, that's why I'm looking like. <laughs> <laughs> Diantha, just, just I'm to, dealing with really important things, as you can tell. <laughs> priorities, priorities. Despite the recent loss to Virginia Tech, Diantha, I would just pick Duke all the way. So, <laughs> go ahead. Carolina. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they, it came across in the. Anyway, it is, it is what it is. It's kind of funny. I'm going to put it away now. <laughs> Like somebody's watching the news. Would it be a good idea at this juncture, Mike, to also mention to people to maybe keep themselves on mute if they're not? Sure, Kip. Talk. Yeah. That'd be great. Comment from the easily distracted here. <laughs> just a minute or two before seven. So we're just hanging out for a minute. Glad to see everybody. Welcome. Great song here. Everybody's on here. Hey, Jonathan, it's nice to see you. I'm glad to see your name pop up. Hello. <laughs> well, it's just, just over seven o'clock, and why don't we get started this evening? My name is Mike Foreman. I am assisting the Ravana Conservation Alliance and Lisa and Sophie with uh, this input session about Riverview Park and the upcoming planned efforts to uh, restore some of the uh, land and practices and along the river, the Rivanna River. So really glad to be here. The purpose tonight is to obtain input from all of you on this plan restoration and help to guide the restoration activity. We are graced tonight by a number of notable uh, people here. Uh, Supervisor Donna Price, Supervisor Diantha McKeel. I don't know if Ann is here. Ann Malik is here. Not sure. I thought she was on the invitation list. Uh, I also thought that I um, didn't haven't seen uh, Mayor Snook here yet either, but they are have signed up and hopefully will attend attend here soon. Really, also um, very much thanking our facilitators who agreed to carry out some work later this evening in breakout rooms and obtain some of this input from you and. Um, Thank you for your service and effort to restoring the river and, and uh, working on it with us. Um, what I'd like to do now is just, if you would, uh, introduce yourselves in the chat. There's a lot of people on board now, 34. So 
If you don't spend a minute in the chat box, if you're familiar with Zoom and that effort, if you just introduce yourself, maybe what organization you're from and uh, let people know who and where you're coming from this evening, that'd be really great. I will now uh, uh, turn it over to my friend, Crystal Ritterwald. Crystal, if you would offer a welcome for us and opening remarks this evening, and just spend a sentence or two introducing yourself for people who may not know who you are. So I'll turn it over to you, Crystal. Hi, um, I'm Crystal Ritterwald. I'm the Environmental Sustainability Manager here in the city of Charlottesville. Um, I've spent more than half my life in Charlottesville now, so you can guess my age. A uh, double who grad, uh, worked in the private sector and joined the city of Charlottesville in the early 2000s. So I've been watching a lot of um, the evolution of environmental stewardship in our community. Um, like many of you, I've enjoyed spending time at Riverview Park and I've wondered if and when some of the conditions that I've seen might be tackled. And some of those conditions are riverbank erosion, damage to river access features, invasive plant species, and the steep banks that limit or prevent getting down to and interacting with the river. Basically, how do we play in the nature space that we have in our backyard? The city recognizes the Rivanna River as an important waterway flowing through an urbanized corridor and one that has a rich history from our Native American friends to the enslaved people and the transportation corridor that that river presented itself. Riverview Park, which is situated with the Rivanna River hugging its eastern border, serves as a unique place and space that offers many opportunities to our community for taking in nature, re recreating, and exploring our collective backyard. In the recently completed urban Rivanna River corridor plan, the primary objective for the future of the river corridor is environmental protection and stewardship. One of the related recommendations in the plan is to identify and implement riparian river restoration and mitigation projects. How do we fix things and how do we build in ways to deal with the impacts that are there, including among other things, the stabilization of eroding stream banks in a manner consistent with natural systems. We're excited that Rivanna Conservation Alliance was successful in obtaining grant funding through the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation for an eff effort focused on just that in Riverview Park, exploring, prioritizing, and pursuing options for addressing the various challenges and achieving some real benefits for the environment, the park's ecology, and the community. Your input regarding what, we, what you see in and what you know about Riverview Park is an important part of this project and will inform the follow-up work to deliver a technically feasible restoration project, like one that we can really do and that makes sense. So again, thank you for taking time to come tonight. The city has enjoyed being part of the process to this point, and we look forward to continuing our collaboration with RCA on this project. Thanks, Crystal. Very well done. Appreciate your effort here. And I wanted to uh, also point to uh, uh, Lisa, you may uh, want to, if you don't mind, putting up your slide about the agenda. I can also do it from the Google document, but if you have it handy, that'd be great and share your screen for a moment. Yeah. Great job. Thank you. If you could, uh, yeah, what are, you have an agenda slide? right there. Excellent, thank you. So tonight, for tonight, as mentioned uh, a little briefly earlier, we're gonna uh, have a couple of presentations uh, from both Lisa and Kit Muma of Ecosystem Services. And then we're going to move into uh, some breakout rooms in Zoom and entertain four different questions, which we'll get to in just a moment. I wanna also point to the chat box for those who are or Zoom aficionados, and I've placed a Google Doc link into the chat box, and I've opened it up for access for everybody. You should be able to access that, although I've been telling everybody Murphy's Law will come into play at some point uh, today, uh, this evening. But that Google document link will be our breakout room tool tonight, but also um, 
has the agenda in the uh, first page of that. So um, thank you for that, Lisa. And I'd like to now go back, if you'd stop sharing your screen, I'd like to go and conduct a couple of polls for you. So we're gonna entertain input from you right away. I do welcome Mayor Lloyd, Lloyd Snook. Welcome, sir, to this meeting tonight. Thank you. And um, let's go to our polls. And I'm gonna just come up and do a poll and I'll launch the poll. And the, uh, the question is, question number one, in the past year, how often have you visited Riverview Park? And the options, I go most days, most weeks, four to 10 times a year, one to three, and I didn't visit the park at all this past year. So if you would entertain uh, this poll question for a few minutes, thank you. Looks like the numbers are certainly in the uh, most weeks and four to 10 times a year. That's a lot, I think, for the year of this group. So we should have 42 responses to this, if you don't mind. We've got 24 right now, about halfway there. Everybody available to see it? Okay, looks like we're completed pretty much. Um, so I'll stop sharing this particular poll, but basically the responses are in the middle. Uh, very few did visit at all and very few visited most days. So kind of a bulk in the middle, which we expected anyway. So the highest percentage was four to 10 times a year. So I think that if you're reflective of the Charlottesville community, that, would, uh, that was quite a bit. So great. Um, stop sharing. I want to. So um, like to go back and see if I can get into poll number two. And um, the question for this particular poll says, what activities do you do in Riverview Park? Uh, walking dogs, walking, jogging, swimming and wading in the river, boating, tubing, observing wildlife and nature. So these options for you, if you would please start your, your recording of your votes on this one, check all that apply so you can check more than one too. Walking and jogging seems to be a clear favorite. If you're Gabe with the canoeing folks, you may be loyal to him and put that in there, boating and tubing. Well, 29 people responded clear, clearly a lot of popular activities at Riverview Park and really appreciate your voting. That gives Lisa and staff a nice measure of what's, uh, what people are uh, accomplishing and doing and enjoying in the park situation. So thank you for that. Let's turn now, if we can, to our first presentation for the evening, which is from Lisa Wittenborn, our Executive Director of the Rivanna Conservation Alliance. And Lisa, if you would add a sense or two on your introduction and then get to your presentation, that'd be wonderful. And thank you for being here. Doing okay, Lisa? Oh, you're on mute. Okay, let me start over. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. All right, there's, there's the Murphy's Law right there. Um, so I'm Lisa Wittenborn, Executive Director of the Ravana Conservation Alliance. And I was saying that I have been um, working with the organization for almost five years now. I started off initially just as a volunteer in the, um, I shouldn't say just as a volunteer because they are the heart of our organization, but as a volunteer in our biological monitoring program and um, working with some education programs and have slowly over time just become more and more involved. And now here I am as the director and I'm very excited about this project and I'm very appreciative to all of you for taking time to um, 
join with us tonight and share your thoughts and ideas for how we can make some improvements in Riverview Park. Um, I'm also happy to see how many of you are really active users of the park. So you're not just interested from a professional or um, some other perspective of living around the park, but you're actually people who are in there using it and appreciating it most weeks of the year. The slides are not advancing. Are they, are they changing for any of you? They are not. We're stuck on the agenda slide. Okay, there we go. That is That's, super there you go. All right. So I like to start off almost every presentation just reminding everyone where we are. Um, we are in the Ravana watershed. Um, the project that we are talking about is in Riverview Park, which is on the east side of the city of Charlottesville, kind of right smack in the middle of the watershed. And all of you should know this, but our watershed is contained within the larger Chesapeake Bay watershed, which you see here in green. And what that means is that any water quality improvements or habitat improvements we make with our project not only benefit us locally, but have the potential to carry on downstream through the James River and into the Bay. I'd also like to talk a little bit about some of the local context for this project. And Crystal already did a good job of um, explaining some of the priorities and goals of the urban Rivanna River corridor plan. Um, that plan was just adopted by the city last month. And in implementing a project at Riverview would really go a long way towards um, promoting some of the goals in that plan. Um, the water quality improvements that could come from a project at Riverview would also go towards supporting the TMDL action plan for the Rivanna River which is focused primarily on reducing sediment to improve the biological health of the river. Um, I also wanna point out that this project is happening um, closely in time to a lot of discussions that are taking place around a proposed pedestrian bridge crossing the river. And one of the locations or potential locations for that bridge is in Riverview Park. This project is separate from that project. Um, they're not connected. And in fact, if the bridge is to cross at Riverview Park, um, it will actually be in a slightly different area of the park than what we are talking about. Um, it is our hope though, that if we implement a project and a bridge does go in at Riverview, that some of the um, stabilization benefits of our project would also benefit that project. Um, I also wanna acknowledge having been part of the stakeholder committee focused on that bridge project um, that there are some serious concerns among some people who live in the Riverview neighborhood in Woolen Mills about overcrowding in the park and parking issues. And um, those are really important issues and we are hoping that they can be addressed, um, but they are kind of out of the scope of our project today, which is really focused on improving the environmental and access conditions on the river bank and in the buffer. Uh, Lisa, in the chat box, Roger Toll indicated that your voice is coming in and out a little bit. Maybe it's your audio of sorts, but just letting you know that. Okay, thank you. I will, I'm not sure what I can do other than just talk more loudly. Um, okay. Sorry. It's okay. Um, so I want to give a little bit of background on where this project came from. And it really started in 2019, um, standing on the banks of the Ravana River with Kip Muma, actually from Ecosystem Services, um, I had asked him to meet me there um, because we'd been hearing a lot of concerns from people in the community and observing issues ourselves where the riverbanks were really deteriorating in a lot of locations. And this was coming on the heels of those record rainfalls and flooding events that we had in 2018 that I'm sure a lot of us still remember. Um, so we were standing at the boat access. And I was asking him questions that had been asked of me about what can we do? How do we, how do we get some projects going to try to fix some of these problems? And we were looking specifically across the river. I don't know how many of you have seen this, um, but there's an area right across from the Darden Cow boat launch where erosion had washed away so much soil that the sewer line was starting to become exposed. And the Ravana Water and Sewer Authority had to come in and do an emergency repair with riprap. And totally understandable that they would need to do that. But the question was, can we anticipate where problems like that might happen and be proactive about fixing them so we don't see 
the riverbank covered in riprap. Um, so we decided to apply for a grant from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation that would focus on helping us prioritize and identify restoration needs in the river corridor. So that project, the Ravana Prioritization Project, really focused on five miles of the river corridor starting at the confluence of the North and South Forks and going all the way down to Morris Creek. And in the process, we collected a lot of data, including on erosion and other environmental conditions, location of utilities and things like that, um, to help us figure out where there was a restoration need. And we also worked with stakeholders to develop some criteria for prioritizing those projects based on potential. So we ended up with a list of prioritized projects. And part of that process was also to identify one potential location for a bank restoration effort. So we walked out of that project with this ranked list of potential locations for, for um, efforts to improve bank conditions or riparian buffer conditions. And the next step was really to start talking with the owners of the parcels in that corridor that were ranked high. Um, and it became clear that some of the projects we could get started on right away. They weren't bank stabilization projects. They were more things about improving the riparian buffer. So for example, we just completed a nine acre um, tree planting in the Dunlora community. Um, this parcel was ranked number two on our list. And we worked with the James River Buffer Program to um, pay for all of those trees that went in there. It was almost 3000 trees. Um, and we put those in in December. And we've been working on some other smaller projects here and there as well. But the big project that came out of that prioritization process was a proposed bank restoration project at Riverview Park. And the reason we selected Riverview Park was because it has the potential to generate the most significant environmental and community benefits in one project. It not only would improve water quality and habitat, but it also has the highest concentration of active public use of the river. It is Charlottesville's only public access to the river. And it has so many different important community amenities in the park, the boat access, the trails that clearly lots of us are using frequently, the playground um, and other features. And there also is the main sewer line still running through the park that needs to be protected. We also felt that this project was gonna be the most likely to be successful in bringing together partners and funders to be, act, to be able to make the project actually happen. So once we selected Riverview Park, we needed to decide where in the park we might want to um, focus restoration efforts. And we ended up selecting a 600 foot section of the riverbank. And this blue line here represents that, but it is approximate. Um, and then we also ended up adding kind of an ancillary project to this bank restoration, which is a stormwater outfall, which is, um, here in that orange line, and you can see a picture of it. It is pretty dramatic, and I think Kip is gonna talk about that in his slides as well. Um, but it is a hazard in the park, and it is clearly contributing a lot of soil um, and pollutants to the river. So adding that to our project um, would make it more efficient to address both. And it also would really ramp up the water quality benefits coming from our project and address this hazard. So once we um, finished that prioritization project, we were um, lucky to be able to secure a second planning grant from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation to keep the project moving forward and start designing what a project at Riverview could actually look like. And that's where we are today. Um, this project that we're calling the Ravana Restoration at Riverview Park Project, or really it's a planning phase that we're in this year. Um, number one and number two are kind of happening simultaneously. We're both working out there doing land surveys and completing engineering studies. That's really ecosystem services side of the project. Um, and they're doing that to identify technically feasible restoration techniques, things that will really work in Riverview Park and hold up. And we're also working with the community and partners to identify what types of restoration objectives and techniques are actually desirable to the community. And that's part of what we're doing here tonight is to get your input on those um, topics. Once we have that information in hand, we'll be able to develop an initial engineering design 
And then we will bring that design back to the community and partners to get their feedback. And then we will refine that design and start developing some process. And these pictures, you might have seen some of those blue tags on the trees. That's what they have been there for is the survey work that's been going on at Riverview. Um, so the next steps after we complete kind of this planning effort this year um, are to continue identifying project partners, start raising additional funds, um, finalizing the landscaping and engineering plans, and then to actually make the project happen. So I have my presentation short, so there'd be plenty of time for questions, but um, Mike, I was actually thinking it would make sense for Kip to go and then to have all the questions at the end. Sure, at least that's fine. Uh, if we could stop sharing and uh, uh, appreciate that and we can move on to Kip. I think that's a fair idea. Either way would work great. Um, and also just a reminder that um, if you got an open microphone and you know it's getting noisy where you are, if you would mute uh, for us now, you know, during our presentations in particular, that'd be helpful for everybody to hear. So. We'll now turn to Kip Mumaw. Kip, if you would uh, share your screen and also talk a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself, and then move into your presentation. Thank you, sir, very much. Okay. Can everybody hear me and see my screen? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Mike, and, and thank you, Lisa and Crystal, and everybody that joined us this evening. Um, my name is Kip Muma. I'm the principal engineer for Ecosystem Services. We're a natural resource consulting firm based in Charlottesville, Virginia. We focus on stream and wetland restoration and some stormwater management as well. Um, so this is very central to the type of work that we do. And I've lived in Virginia all my life and I'm still feel somewhat like a newcomer to Charlottesville, but I've been here since 2014. Um, so I've been here a little while um, and definitely partake in a lot of the um, trails and um, in particular Riverview Park, among others. So uh, a little bit zoomed in on where our, our project is versus the entire Ravana watershed, but wanted to, again, kind of locate ourselves and where it, Riverview Park is this kind of reddish um, dot here um, at the end of a 468 square mile drainage area. So this is, uh, I think everybody that's been out there understands, and certainly if you've been out there during a flood, understands that this is a big river system. And again, kind of showing the area that Lisa already went over, um, but along this is the Ravenna River, and this is kind of where we're looking and, and exploring um, this project, and this is the that 200 foot outfall restoration um, area that we had identified as well. And this is the playground and the kiosk to kind of uh, orient folks. And uh, here's a kind of picture of that bank, which I think um, a lot of the conditions that we were talking about and that Crystal and Lisa mentioned and that we reviewed in the, in the study um, are really evident by looking at the conditions of the bank and they're almost self-explanatory, but as scientists and engineers, we do want to um, look at this through a critical lens and understand more of what's going on. And hot off the presses here, um, might be a little bit tough to see here, but um, this is a cross section showing that bank that we were just looking at. And the pink line here is, um, a survey that was done using flown uh, LIDAR topography for the state. And that was done, I think, right in 2016, maybe 2017. Um, those years were split up around the state. And the red line is the survey that we just completed through this area. And so you can see that that represents um, plus or minus about three feet of bank erosion. And this is right in the um, park, just, just north of the kiosk that was shown on the previous slide. And so we do have um, both predictive models of erosion that we did during the, one of our first studies. And now we do have this empirical data too, showing what I think a lot of us can see in those um, photographs. And then the outfall um, that we're talking about here, 
um, is a fairly dramatic example of um, what concentrated flow uh, can, can do to um, soils through here. And so we see a fairly significant gully. And just as a comparison, although the resolution for smaller channels isn't always great for these um, LIDAR uh, evaluations, it did seem pretty good. And so you can see again this pink line, and we have about 10 feet or so of uh, vertical degradation of the channel. And so I think uh, a very dramatic uh, cross-section view there that we can see. And so why is, why is this happening? And there's no one answer to that question. Um, I think it is important for everybody to understand that this is not a unique situation. Um, we do see this uh, throughout uh, Virginia and uh, honestly throughout, throughout the world. Um, we see river degradation of this kind. And there are a lot of different factors that are leading to that. One is the watershed itself. Um, so when we have changes in land cover and historical activity in the watershed, um, those, those changes can precipitate um, the conditions that we see today. So we see the loss and degradation of riparian forests along the corridor. Um, obviously, uh, for, first and foremost on a lot of folks' minds um, when we get these heavy rains is, is there a change in the precipitation patterns that we're experiencing? Um, and, and then the increased sedimentation, so just more erosion and, and sediment that's coming into our, our river systems can cause some of these impairments that we see. And also changes in downstream conditions. We all, um, if you've lived here for some time or, or read up on some of these, we know that there is a dam downstream and, and removal of that dam um, was a, a, a big win for the um, diversity and abundance of, of fish species upstream and opened up um, uh, close to uh, 37 miles of habitat. Um, but it can also uh, create some um, additional pressure and stressors on the stream banks. And so there we see, and I think one of the main mechanisms that we have to think about is as that pressure is exerted on the stream banks, it undermines a lot of the vegetation that we have high up on those banks. And that vegetation can then uh, in turn be compromised and fall in. And that's where we see the most significant uh, erosion occurring um, in a single event where those trees might fall into the river itself and dislodge large portions of the bank. And so what does that do to our, the area that we, that we spend time in and the area that we care about? Um, it can cause loss of trees, um, as we just mentioned, uh, the loss of park infrastructure. So trails, small path, uh, pathways like what was um, going over the, the outfall area that we're talking about. Um, we can see this degradation of, of the native riparian habitat and we can see um, other invasive species dominate. Degradation of in-stream habitat, all that sediment can impair um, the functioning of different aquatic organisms. And we see that bear out in a lot of the monitoring that has been conducted by DEQ, RCA, and others. Um, we're, we're, we do know that the Ravenna River does have an active, uh, what's called a total maximum daily load or a TMDL, which essentially is just a description of the impairment and the stressors, uh, namely sediment here that we're talking about. And so we've done some analysis. It's, it's, um, we're still obviously in the beginning phases of, of understanding this river, but we have a decent amount of information as well. So we do have historical imagery analysis that we can look at and see how the riverscape has changed over time. There are different local studies that have identified um, these conditions and discussed potential reasons why they might be taking place. And then as Lisa described in our own work, we've done a, a drone survey of the corridor to really understand uh, the corridor conditions, what's called a banks assessment, which is a predictive model of erosion rates. We just conducted the top topographic survey, so very fresh. Um, and, and that predictive modeling that, um, that we're, we're also working on now to understand the hydraulics of this area of the river. Um, and then the water quality data that uh, just discussed or just mentioned uh, that went into creating that, that um, 
TMDL. And here's just a, a overview. I think it's sometimes a really important lens to see how the landscape has changed. We try to look at the entire watershed as well, but you can see the blue line there. Um, this is the bank of the Ravana River that we're looking at. It's extended further upstream than our than kind of our area of study currently. You can see in 1937, even very few trees um, were on that riverbank, and that loss of of riparian forest uh, can have implications uh, that can carry through to the present day. And so it matters what we did in the past and that really shapes what the river looks like um, and our experience of the river in the future. A uh, very important thing to keep in mind when considering restoration as well is that we're, we're creating a future condition potentially that could have a great impact. Um, our approach, and I think just worth mentioning of how we step into this type of work and in and, and partnership with RCA and, and the community. We really want to borrow from, from kind of the, the medical community to some, some degree and, and um, we, we don't wanna do any harm. We wanna make sure that the, uh, any solution is, is not worse than the conditions that are, occur that are out there right now. Um, and engineers, obviously we have a, um, a mixed uh, history of, of doing that. I'd say society in general has a mixed history of, of um, uh, planning environmental interventions um, to make sure that they do no harm, um, but it's very central to our pro thought process. We do want it to be community centric and that's part of reaching out to everybody and, and discussing this topic. We wanna put the community first and understand what, um, uh, how, how the river is used, what people think, what their vision of the river uh, is for the future. We want to determine the actual uplift potential um, of this river corridor. So not just maybe what it looked like in the past or what it, um, but what it could be and what sort of beneficial uses and Im improvements, what that uplift potential could be. And we want to link anything that we're doing um, to that specific cause of, of degradation um, and not just propose something that would be considered more of a band-aid um, for something that is uh, more significant. And then scale that design based on the goals and the outcomes of a lot of the, the community discussions that we might have. And then of course, evaluate trade-offs. No solution is going, as I just mentioned about um, uh, other environmental interventions, there are always going to be trade-offs and it's important that we think about them and discuss them and really know why we're um, looking to propose something. And so what can we do? Um, we center our design work around nature-based solutions, nature-based approach to reduce the force of um, water and, and the, those erosive velocities that affect the banks and cause a lot of that erosion and degradation to water quality. And so there are different things. These are all, all these pictures that I'm gonna show you um, are either during construction or right after construction of, of projects. So it's important to notice there aren't a lot of trees in some of these pictures, but numerous trees were planted. It's just that you can't always see the restoration project um, once the trees grow in. And so uh, helpful to see what sort of, what's, what's the foundation, what's going on underneath these things. So there's different ways to deflect flow and control the energy. And what we're doing is we're trying to mimic uh, things that you would see in nature el elsewhere in, the, in that same riverscape or in an area that has less disturbance associated with it. So I won't go through all these different names here, but know that they're trying, we're trying to deflect flow, we're trying to control the energy, um, we're trying to mostly rely on planting uh, herbaceous and, and trees to uh, provide a lot of that resistance um, to the energy and then show a few local examples of our work and work that's been done. Um, so this is upstream and Derrick's Road and, and you can see this, many, many of you might have uh, walked through here and this was um, actually done as part of a, as kind of a, a prompted by a, um, some development work that was done here, but obviously a severe eroding bank um, and uh, need for a, a trail crossing to um, and then also on in a lot of this work is in the Meadow Creek uh, watershed. This is also a, a tributary, kind of call it river run near Penn Park. Um, and so that's an example of a smaller system uh, with a lot of springs 
maybe more akin to what would be done in an outfall uh, restoration approach. A lot of herbaceous vegetation there that comes in the first year, and then a lot of the um, trees will start to come up after that. Meadow Creek itself, uh, lots of you might have explored this area. I know it's a favorite for of mine and a favorite for lots of folks, um, but uh, fairly excessive, severe erosion. Again, smaller drainage area than what we're talking about here, but still a, a very dynamic and large system. And here's a, a much larger system than the Ravana River, but it's in the um, town of Elkton. And this is on the South Fork Shenandoah River. A picture there of the eroding stream banks on an outer meander, and then what it looked like after construction. Um, again, before a lot of the, the uh, trees have, have taken off. And here's just a picture of kind of that process that you see here. So this is an example of a bank stabilization technique, again, not proposing that this is uh, I identical to what would be done in Riverview Park, but just an example of what can be done. Uh, these soil lifts are constructed and then vegetated um, heavily, and then there are these um, what we call uh, kind of deflection um, veins that go out into the river and actually help deflect some flow around this bend. Uh, Linville Creek in the town of Broadway is another project that we did. It has a similar kind of condition here, and um, we did use this a, a, a same technique here, but without the uh, without the the vein arms in the in the river. And essentially, just again trying to meet the the river where it is and understand how it functions, and then propose a solution that will function long term to the best of our ability to predict. And this, is, again, is kind of the progression here. A lot of the before pictures starting at the top, left to right. And then during construction, they almost look like stair steps there. But then you can see as the vegetation starts to come in, you, you no longer even see that it's, um, more vegetated corridor. We like to say if we do our job right in some settings, it, it looks like it was just natural and, and how it would have been um, had that initial disturbance not occurred. I think that's about it for time, and maybe we left a little bit of additional time for questions. Thank you, Kip. Uh, if you would stop sharing your screen for us, that'd be great. Uh, there were a couple of questions in the chat, and I, uh, Bill Emery, if you're there, would you mind asking your questions for Kip? I know Chris Jenzik offered some remarks back to you as well, but Bill, if you don't mind asking your questions, we can start off with you in a question and answer session. Yep. Just start the volume. Oh. Sorry, hang on. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just wondering the the big gully that you showed uh, right downstream on the right bank from the park. What the source of water was that is causing that erosion and. Chris Gensick pointed out that maybe it's the outflow of the creek that, that there's sort of a, a, I don't know what you call it, intermittent creek that, that is uh, in the valley in between Chesapeake Street and Market Street. And one thing really remarkable about the Will Mills neighborhood is there's almost no stormwater infrastructure. So it's really a great opportunity to um, you know, whenever the city does get around to worrying about stormwater and the woolen mills to actually do it in a way where it's not just putting it in a pipe and getting it to the river as quickly as possible. And then the other question I had was, is there anywhere in between here and Rasawek that has the stream or the, you know, the bank profile somewhere where erosion hadn't basically destroyed the river's bank profile. I and mean, you always hear the Monicans back in those days, you know, had villages that would span the river and there were no big steep banks. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, uh, no. yeah go ahead, Kip. Sure. Um, so as you can kind of see, in, if I am still sharing my screen, I actually wasn't sure how to stop sharing it. So I'll just keep it, keep it up here. <laughs> That's all right. You did. Um, 
Um, so, so as you mentioned, uh, uh, some of the drainage um, here is coming from um, Chesapeake Street and, and kind of being piped down. Um, there's a, a small cul culvert here um, that, that leads to the drainage. And so there is some, some, excuse me, channelized flow that is contributing to this. But what we also see with the Ravana specifically, and it's in numerous locations along the Ravana, is that when we do have larger storm events that cause flooding and, and actually get out of um, the banks, it's such a large volume of water that when it recedes, um, that ends up being where a lot of soil loss can occur is, is that the actual, as that storm recedes, all that water funnels into these small outfalls and causes that degradation. So it's a combination of things, um, both the, the watershed draining to this area itself and the Ravana River. And, and so both of those things kind of contribute to the, the conditions that we see. And then the, the second question I think is really excellent. It gets into a, um, a way that these types of systems are, are um, designed in that we try to find analogs for the conditions that we're trying to um, produce. So right now we are looking at it from more of, we're, we're studying the area, we're looking to develop hydraulic analyses, um, but we will also look at areas of the river um, and it could be upstream or downstream um, that have the conditions that we want to try to emulate and understand what, are, what is leading to uh, that condition being different than the conditions that we have here. And so it's kind of what we call an analog or reference uh, design. And so I don't have a, uh, an exact answer of where those are, are located that I can point you to, um, but it's something that we'll be looking at. Thanks, Kip. In the chat from Paul Miller is a question about please comment on the opportunity for con connectivity of the city neighborhoods to park and river and trail. And it's not specific to Riverview Park, Paul, I don't think, but didn't know if there's any comments and uh, we can open it up to any Charlottesville yeah, if, person. If, yeah, no, if, if you don't mind, can I just throw a, throw a 20 second out there and then. Please go ahead. Mind if I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so number one, there are, uh, my thanks and my appreciation. There are loads of people on this call who have given a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and I commend you for your volunteer time. There's also loads of crazy smart people on here. I have I have zero technical knowledge on this, so I am absolutely coming at this from just some dopey guy who lives up the street, you know, up the hill from River uh, Riverside Lunch, and you know, my neighbors and I go and walk and, and, and walk and enjoy the park. So. You know, I had an opportunity um, as Martha Jefferson neighborhood. We're an adjacent neighborhood. Um, we're basically High Street, East High Street, and sort of up the hill. And um, and then adjacent to us is our sort of our, our, our friendly sibling, Little High Street neighborhood. That's more of <laughs> sort of the Mead Park area. And and then of, of course our folks that are over in the Woolen Mills neighborhood. And those would seem to be the three. Um, most local neighborhoods um, in the city that are that are involved in in the park, and I had an opportunity to walk our neighborhood and down towards High Street with our new NDS director from the city, and and so we're trying to have a lot of conversations about um, integration of city planning and fixing sidewalks and crossing streets and things like that. So my point here is, I'd love love to find a way to make getting to the park via pedestrian and biking and pushing strollers and pushing a wheelchair how do we make it more accessible from the neighborhoods from north downtown little high street woolen mills martha jeff how do you cross east high street how do you get behind jack and yeah. jill's how do you get over there so that's that's what i would challenge and 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 hope that the city can take a leadership position on accessing the great work that you guys are doing. Appreciate your question, Paul. Thank you. And of course, that's a, a larger issue than this evening tonight, but I think a very valid and, and important one, a critical one to think about. So I'll, we could take another few seconds if someone on the call would like to respond to Paul's question and comment, we can certainly take a minute to uh, respond, Paul. Anybody on the, Kip, you, you'd be first if you wanted to 
respond. Uh, if not, maybe one of our city or county supervisors or Crystal might respond in a way. Kip, anything? If you'd like, this is Chris Kensick. I can give a quick response to that. We are, we're certainly looking to connect from the corner of Fairway uh, down in through Mr. Wood's property. We've been talking to him for some time about, uh, I think some people walk it now, but if you go through Mead Park and there's a, a right turn at, at Fairway Avenue, that would be another place we might find new access. Um, crossing High Street, we can talk to neighborhood development about those kind of things. But yeah, we were certainly looking for more um, lace in the network because now it's either Free Bridge, the River Rental Company, or Riverview. But yeah, we think the uh, the former circus grounds might offer some connection, and we're certainly looking at that. And from the Parks Department, in terms of access to the river, we're pretty excited that maybe grading that bank back at Riverview would make it less of a cliff down to the river for everybody to actually get in the water down that area. So we're tracking this project in an ecological sense. It's awesome. And also from an access and recreation point, it's also very good. So yeah, we'll continue to look at bike pedestrian and off-road trail connections that might create more uh, penetration points from the urban area down to the water as this project's a little separate. That's an ongoing issue that we're working on in a lot of places, but we'll see how this um, we can keep pushing that. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's great. I, I would hope, hopefully you guys can collaborate, you know, in the city between NDS and utilities and parks and rec and all, you know, so that there's a collaboration and joint effort. So we're maximizing efficiency. Mm, thank you, Paul. It's great. Let's reflect back on Lisa and Kip's presentations and I'd open it up the, to the floor for any additional questions on their presentations. We'll take a moment and see if you have any. Uh, Kip, I actually have one um, myself, now that I think about it, <laughs> before anybody else jumps in. Uh, the term uplift potential was a little con you know, confusing to me. Uh, would you explain that a little more to me? Sure. As a participant? Um, Thank you, Kip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we're looking at uplift potential, we're trying to understand um, what sort of Im improvement to the river, what is it going to generate? And so if we're talking about erosion, um, that might be, it is eroding at a current rate now, and what could an intervention, say bank stabilization or some of those practices that I showed, in what way would that reduce the amount of erosion? So it's that kind of trying to quantify what that uplift is. If it were access, it would say, we would say we have one point of access now, could we create multiple and mm. so it's that that difference from what it currently is and we're looking at both um, social and environmental uplift um, for this project specifically and, and most projects that we're working on yes thank you that's explains it appreciate it other questions for kip and lisa who would like to offer something i'd like to ask kip a question i had a chance to ask him this before the meeting but um when you showed the bank profile and how that had changed over time, could you um, describe what rate of erosion you actually discovered there? You showed the profile, but I don't know that you gave out the number. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think. Uh, you want to I'd share like your screen that... again, Kip? You're welcome to. Oh, okay. I thought I was still sharing. At the bottom, you can hit share screen. You should be able to share there. there you go. Get to the right slide here right and so what we're looking at is is about three feet um, sometimes more uh, sometimes a little bit less depending on the area that we're looking at in about five years and so that's a erosion rate just over that time period of about 0.6 feet per year um, one thing to take into consideration because you might hear those types of different annualized erosion rates that's not an annualized erosion rate that's just over those um, five years. So sometimes you might hear uh, of an area that's eroding, you know, one foot per year. And if they were talk did an erosion study, that would be more of an annualized rate that would say, um, not every single year is that occurring, um, but overall the erosional processes um, kind of in a long-term projection equate to that. And so even though this is 0.6, um, 
that's fairly significant given the rain uh, that we've had over those five years. Um, so we, we might even expect um, that the erosion rates, if it were annualized, to be uh, potentially greater than that. Thanks. Laurel, would you like to ask a question? And Kip, if you don't mind stopping sharing, unless you want to go back for Laurel's question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, Kip, as you were talking, uh, making your presentation, it's the first time that it that I really grasped uh, the potential effect of having removed the dam. Um, that the watershed above the dam must now be trying to uh, come to an equilibrium of sorts. So, so that the river levels have to come down and with it, sort of the stream banks um, and all the, the tributaries coming in to what used to be basically a, a ponded area. Um, so I'm just curious where you think Riverview Park's stream bank is in that evolution. Um, I, you may not have that information yet, but I'm, I'm curious if you if you kind of have a picture in your mind of where it's going to go, where it's wanting to go, what the river wants to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that is really at the heart of what we we try and um, understand and interpret from the river and what the river is showing us is is what what is that trajectory and what we're looking any intervention that's proposed is really trying to get it on a on a trajectory of recovery. Um, so what we do notice about this section of Riverview is it has dropped in elevation as much as it can because we're right there. Anybody that's tried to, um, you know, take a kayak or canoe or raft down the river in this area knows how rocky and if it's a low flow, it's you're going to have to get out and walk. So we know that it's dropped as far, and that's important because the more that a river drops in elevation, really the larger that area ends up being for flow to be concentrated in, it's never getting out of its banks. So that portion of the process has kind of completed itself. And so what we're seeing now is more of the widening out of the river corridor. And, and that is a little tricky to be able to um, pinpoint. And that's what we're certainly gonna be looking at is what is that equilibrium um, given the watershed uh, hydrologic inputs, the flow and sediment. Um, and so I, I think our initial kind of looks at that is, is that it's, it's certainly not in its most rabbit, rapid, <laughs> rapid, rapid uh, advancement of, the, of, of erosion in, in the stream banks. Um, but given kind of these results of the, of the survey, we can still see that it's, it's, it's a very active er erosion. Um, so I don't have a specific answer in terms of you know, 2040, it'll, it'll start to equilibrate and kind of have chosen its, uh, the width of, of the channel. It's going to be functional long-term, but that is uh, uh, an outcome of, of what we're looking at through the design process is what is that width? Um, a good catchphrase for for river restoration is is that you just you you want to give the river room. Thanks, Kip. Good question, Laurel. Last chance for any questions before we move on to our next task for this evening. Anyone? There's one in the chat, Mike. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, the question reads: How many, if any, of the of the trees can be saved during this process? Takes a long time for newly planted trees to grow, better to preserve existing trees if possible. I think that's a very valid question too, Kip. Would you like to entertain that? Yeah. Um, so when when we're starting to look at what is that that width of stream um, that it would start to equilibrate, and when we'd start to see kind of those lower erosion rates, if we had a, a if if we go the route of more of a vegetated um, bank on that side looking at what resistance that can provide, that will give us a good sense of, of what um, removal of trees or protection of trees can be possible in that area. Um, again, this is very much in the beginning stages. So we want to save every tree because the tree that is there and the root system that is there, if we can preserve it, it's a fantastic you know, source of stabilization and resistance. That's really what we want. 
but the trees that are in poor health or already have com compromised root systems, those are the ones that are um, more likely to uh, need to be removed during a, a restoration uh, project like this. Thank you. It's also important to note that a lot of those trees will be removed by the river, um, especially with that high rate of erosion that's happening there. Thank you. Well, part of our agenda tonight is to just take one more poll. So I want to offer that to you. It's really about uh, thinking about Kip's presentation and, and Lisa's presentation about the practices that are being considered and what they could address. So uh, I'll get the poll up and if you would um, uh, I could get to what I want to get to, that would be um, All right, I did it. <clears throat> Our last poll for this evening was, Ant tries to ask this question. What are your top goals for improving the riverfront air, area at Riverview Park? I ask you to select your top five. You'll see uh, about eight or nine choices. So if you would respond to that, what really concerns you? What are the issues for you as a participant tonight? And what would you like to uh, see taken care of? You please respond, that'd be great. Thank you. So water pollution, invasive plants or the and river access or top boat getter so far. Okay, good, we have more voters, good. Up to 28 now out of 42. Really a common set of answers, water pollution, invasive plants, river access, um, wildlife habitat at close second. So really I would just sort of group that as taking care of our natural world as best we can. And uh, it's really good to know, really appreciate it. Well, thank you all very much on that. Uh, our last major task tonight is to really move into our breakout rooms and entertain the four questions in your chat. And I'll re and Sophie, if you don't mind helping me by putting that Google Doc link sort of down below where everybody can see it again. Do you mind doing that for me? I'd like to get into our breakout rooms now. And again, our facilitators, um, remembering our rooms that uh, we um, allocated to you earlier, they're already there, but we'd like to uh, uh, re you know, get into our rooms and we're trying to get, oh, seven or eight people in each room. Uh, we have eight different breakout rooms and uh, we're gonna try to uh, get you all assigned to the rooms. And if I can know how to do that, get there. Okay, so, huh, maybe someone can help me. Um, Mike, I think I may have control over <laughs> the oh, rooms, you? but not the knowledge to assign people to them. Well, that's worse than me even. Uh, yeah, I was wondering why I didn't have control, but we have, everybody's not assigned to the rooms. Uh, I'm only still seeing three rooms here, actually. Okay, well, let's see if we can work this out. Uh, why don't we close all the rooms and um, and if y'all bear with me, want to get a drink from your kitchen, that's fine with me too. Um, um, Okay, we're going to create eight breakout rooms, uh, sign automatically and recreate it. Okay, you should be uh, 
receiving a message. And let me talk to the facilitator for a moment. Just want to make sure you're, uh, it looks like you will be in a room, uh, may not be the one you assigned to, uh, but you're in there with a n correct number of people. So we're going to, uh, boy, that just, huh. I did have it assigned there a minute ago. I'm only seeing three rooms still. Huh. Well, I'm a little I'm bit. I'm not seeing any rooms. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Mike, do you want me to give it, do you want me to give it a try as a co-host? Yes, please, if you would. I'm having difficulty. Open all rooms. You all see that you've been invited to join breakout rooms? No. Hmm. It's, it's, it's doing still something wacky. Three. I was, I was able yet. to start adding rooms and then they, they vanished. Huh. Well, Mike, I can see that I've been in, invited to join a room. I don't know if there's something with those of us who've been made hosts that's messing it up. Well, perhaps um, if somebody has an answer for me, that would be great. Mike, I'm going to drop off and rejoin the call because I feel like I may have the master controls for some reason. And okay. I was the one starting the polls. <laughs> Um, so maybe me leaving will help and then I'll just come. Okay. I'm sorry for the for the confusion. Well, um, let's switch gears because I don't want to keep people either waiting if we're having a technical issue. I have done this before and it's a little bit uh, confused and why it's not working for everybody, but um, nonetheless, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, we'll just entertain the question that the breakout room tool is not working for us tonight. We're going to do this manually and deal with it. So what I'd like to do is, uh, Sophie, if you don't mind writing in the chat uh, as the answers come in, we're just going to entertain it as one big group. And it's going to be a little hectic and chaotic, but let's begin the process. Uh, if someone figures it out, that's okay too. But let's offer some in the chat, if Sophie can help to type. Our first question uh, is really, please offer any initial re reaction to the project and its goals. Please offer any reaction to the project and its goals. So who would like to offer something to us in the chat? We'll write it in the chat. Offer any initial reaction to the project and its goals. Do you going to find this helpful to you, or helpful to the city, not helpful, damaging in any way, not damaging? What's your viewpoint? And you can type your response in the chat too, but I want to have a verbal conversation as well for those who want to express an opinion about it. Thank you, Crystal. That's a good idea. Would someone like to offer an opinion on the project as you have heard it tonight? Paul Miller says project looks good, sounds great. What's the realistic time timeline? Maybe Lisa, you want to talk to that or Kit? Um, I can start that answer and then Kip can finish it up. Um, so this year we are focusing on um, that initial planning part of the project, which will get us to about a 30% completed design. And then next year, um, spring of 2023, we intend to apply for a National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, Foundation implementation grant, which would yeah. pay for yeah. most of the construction for the project. And that um, grant would have a two-year time horizon. So we probably would be looking at construction um, winter of 2024, 2025. So um, a couple of years of effort, really. Yep. Okay. Kip, did I 
get that right. Pretty sure I did, <laughs> but anyone who knows better can weigh in. I'm still working on the breakout rooms, just FYI for everybody. And they're gonna, the original ones we had done as a test to close in 20 seconds. So we'll see if I can assign them after that. But let's continue talking. Uh, Peter Krebs, do you have a comment? Invites folks to the river, but folks can't really experience the river itself. Would you uh, add on to that? Yeah, I would just um, say that because of the, the steep banks, people can know that they're close to the river, they can see it, they can be close to it, but you know, they can't um, really get up to it. They can't touch it. They certainly can't, you know, splash in it or, or anything like that. Here, here's a little quick anecdote. One time um, I, I saw a small, a small family over at River Wondering if you can see the breakout rooms. Okay, you're all being put in breakout rooms. Oh. Well, that was. <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy. Hmm. Well, that was interesting. I've been spontaneously put into rooms three times. Really? Oh yeah. my gosh. I am, well, first of oh, all, I think... feel bad about it. I don't know what's going on, honestly. Yeah, no, that's okay. We're, I'm meeting some people I never would have, uh... <laughs> it's like a well, delayed uh, room assignment. Well, I'm gonna leave you to talk with these folks here, okay? Well, I think if we if we all leave, we'll all be together again. I guess hearing the discussion. So, right. Oh, I'm gonna leave too. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I I think we're gonna stay in these breakout rooms, Amy. For the oh, we are. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you don't okay. mind handling the questions you have in the in the. Uh, yeah. No, not at all. Room. I thought the the other discussion was going on, so I wasn't. Oh sure. no! Everybody went to breakout rooms. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Spontaneously. It's great. Spontaneously. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, sure. Okay, so I'm, I'm the one who has been assigned to kind of um, go through the questions and, and record everyone's feedback. So I will kind of read through them um, and try to get us discussing um, or get some responses for a few minutes for each of the four questions. So the first um, is that now that we've seen some of the ideas for the planned work at Riverview Park, um, what are your, your hopes and concerns um, uh, about the, the planning project for the, the benefit of what, we, what you hope to see in the future? Well, I'm kind of interested about the bank stabilization because on the far side of the river, what trail? Oh. Oh. oh boy. Dan and Marie and Kyle. Wow. Hi, Emery. Hey, sorry, I think I got kicked off and then tried to come back no, on. No, I, I may have lost my room assignment. I, if I knew what was going on, I would tell you because I don't at this point. Well, in time. How exciting! You've done a really nice job. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, people are in rooms, and I guess we'll bring them back. Uh, at the right time, but I'm just not going to do, I'm not going to touch anything because every time I've touched something uh, in a normal way for Zoom, it's really backfired tonight. I don't know what the deal is. Um, anyway, law, you called it. for Dan and Kyle, if you're in here with us, um, thank you for being a part of tonight. Oh, they left. 
See, I didn't touch anything and they just left. How interesting. Oh, well. Um, anyway, Anne-Marie, good to, oh. Wow. Okay. It didn't work. Oh, well. Oh, hey, Anne Marie, you're back.
خب
<laughs> well, welcome back to a uh, convoluted and snafu laden breakout room session. I appreciate it. I actually looked at the list and everybody was mixed up too. I'm, I apologize for that. I hope there was some good discussion, at least on some of the questions. But did any of the facilitators like to comment on what occurred during their room? Maybe Kip or Lisa, did you get anything done? Um, yes, well, we started off with too many facilitators in our group, <laughs> but we did, no, we had a good chat. Um, we talked about concerns around if we um, need to reshape the banks, how far back would that go and not wanting to impact any of the amenities in the park, um, but also noting that the sewer line really uh, provides a hard stop for that effort and um, not sure what that means in terms of what angle of bank we could accomplish there. Um, yeah. Talking about um, wanting to have views of the river, but that they don't need to, you don't need to be able to see the river along yeah. every length of the trail, that there could be more discrete places where you stop and see the river so we could have trees in other locations. Yeah, um, thanks Lisa. Those are just a couple. Amy or Bob Choi, would you like to offer any comment on your questions and responses for the group? You no, know, I always like to comment, Mike. Um, so <laughs> the uh, there's there's some um, uh, additional questions about uh, the trees. You know, what what can we save? Um, there are opportunity to have some mature trees that are uh, in serviceable condition and, and not too damaged at this point. Um, keep an eye on them. Uh, questions about the the time and the 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 zone of the park that would be uh, off limits during construction and what that kind of timeline would look like. Uh, and also the question about what does, a safety question about what does river access mean? Uh, right now we've, we're, it, we're there near the, the playground and um, uh, you know, the kids don't run off the cliff typically uh, into the, into the, uh, the river, but when they, when they do have um, river access, what will, uh, presume it would be in the city parks uh, uh, zone of responsibility to make sure people understand um, the risks involved in entering the river, especially with smaller kids. Yeah, you're right. That's that. And Ann Malik made a great point in the chat box, which I'll copy and keep those comments that were there before we went off into Zoom land. Uh, thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. David Smith, anything from your group that you'd like to report on? Well, we, we had a, a group, a very small group with Bill Emery and, and uh, Martha and I. Um, <laughs> you got you, just, you there, there was a lot of praise for Chris Genzik tonight and, and his long standing efforts to, to try and work with the city. And it was just hopefully that he, he can continue to, you know, we've had a long partnership with him at RCA. Yes. Um, just continuing with what, what he's trying to do and, and get the access to the river and, and work with people like Gabe who, who, who he's got the, the one little area that we worked on so that hopefully this Riverview project would be a good, just a benchmark that we can start off with and, and get better access to the river. Thanks Dave very much. Linda Seaman, anything from your group that you'd like to report on? Yes, I, first of all, there's just great enthusiasm for the project and a lot of support. And I, I'm encouraged by that. Um, I think there, one concern is to make sure that there is good pedestrian and bike access from all of the surrounding neighborhoods and involvement from community groups, particularly the school systems. Um, I think that was the biggest concern, but there's a lot of hope that this is going to uh, make the river more accessible to those who want to use it. Thank you, Linda, very much. Mr. Jim Nix, anything from your group you'd like to talk about? Up. Well, my group uh, was uh, <laughs> four of us, including, four. Okay. including uh, Bob, who's already spoken. So. Okay, very good. Um, Martha, you were in the small group too. Anything that came to your mind during the discussions or before? Um, that hasn't been covered. We, there was a good idea to uh, look to other cities uh, like Richmond uh, and look at their public access projects around the river and see if there are any ideas that that we might want to use here. Yes, thank you very much. Well, what I think we should do based on, you know, what wasn't our original plan, but if we do have your email list and what I'd like to do is 
uh, make the Google document accessible to you through an email, open link, and you can access it. And if you care to, and we really love to hear from you, contribute to the four questions in a, a, a more calm way, more calm way, professional way. So uh, we'll do that for you as well. I'll turn to Lisa uh, for any closing remarks. It's getting close to 8.30. We don't want to keep you past our scheduled time. Lisa, would you offer any next steps for us? No, she, oh, you're on mute. Keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for participating tonight and for sharing your input and your helpful suggestions and um, recommendations and feedback. Um, we are really going to be working on gathering input and feedback from the community over the next several months. So this is really just the beginning. Um, we do have an online form that you can access from our website, ravannariver.org, if you want to make um, more comments, or as Mike said, we'll have that Google Doc available. I'm available anytime, pretty much, to chat with you one-on-one, -on -one, meet you at the park. If you have an organization that would like to learn more about the project, I'm happy to make a presentation. Um, whatever you need to learn more about the project and feel like you're informed to be able to participate, we would like to do that um, for you. And um, we will, once the initial design concept is developed, be reaching back out to all of you who are here on this call tonight. I'm setting up another meeting. I'd like to think it could possibly be in person, but I don't know. Um, but we will have another opportunity at that point to review um, something that's a little more concrete. That's something I heard tonight was it's hard to comment on something that is still so initial in the planning process. And I definitely appreciate that. But we also wanted to get your input very early so we don't start going down a road that the community is not comfortable with. We really want you to help us set that path forward. And I think you've helped us do that tonight. So thank you very much. My thanks to Crystal Rittervold for sure for opening remarks and our welcome. Thanks, Crystal, for your thoughts and comments. Really very much appreciate it. So you'll be hearing from us. My apologies again on the Zoom zombie world that we just went into a little bit. I also have no idea what happened, but I'm looking forward to hearing from my group to see if anybody had any insight to that. Um, but thank you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. And Following Lisa's comment, I hope it's face to face and uh, we get to see each other and be with each other. So thank you all for the evening tonight and for your comments and input and the RCA folks and anybody else uh, in the, our group want to stay for a minute. I'd love to hear some comments from you. So thank you. Thank Have, a good you. Evening. Have a good thank evening. Thank you, Mike, for facilitating the meeting and setting this up for us. It's been very helpful. Oh, thanks so much. Uh, appreciate it. Bye bye, thank everybody. You. Have a good evening. Hmm. Who's remaining? So Kyle's here, Jonathan several. Harris. Well, um, I have no idea what happened on Zoom. Does anybody else? I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was horrible. You know, there's, there's... <laughs> we made it work. Yeah, we got it. We got it done. <laughs> yep. yeah, we got it. I, I, I have heard of some um interesting uh web browser and um web browser version snafus oh yeah so yeah some, if, if folks have not been keeping their browser updated um there's been some interesting glitches coming through and not, and not only on zoom but on a, a number of things yeah yeah because i didn't even touch the breakout room button when you all disappeared <laughs> So I don't know. I swear I didn't. I was like, I figured it out. I don't know if it was, I, it could have been, we had too many co-hosts. I could have confused it or something, but anyway. There were only four of us, four of us in our group, but we had the voice of Bill Emery there too. So <laughs> you, had, you, know, you had plenty of conversation then, Jim, I guess. Yeah. We well, had I, four and one was Crystal. So, <laughs> you know, we had an expert. Where did everyone go? Because we only had a few people in our room too. <laughs> I group, think there were a bunch of groups. Group one had like eight or nine people in it, and then one group had four in it, and that was never the plan. So I, again, I'm. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> oh, the, this could no. be my like 10,000 Zoom in two years, and I've never had that happen before. <laughs> <laughs>
anyway, I don't want to belabor it. I think we did get some information. I'll copy the chat as well. And Lisa and Sophie, if you want to help me, I will send out the do Google Doc to everybody and they can, you know, take some time to comment. That's certainly easy to do. So anybody else want to offer any comments or thoughts on the evening? I thought well, you're well, One thing, um, Lisa, the, the information and the links that you sent out today, I spent a lot of time just reading through that and it was really helpful to, mm -hmm. to just see kind of the breadth of it. And the other, I, I didn't realize until tonight's meeting that it was really separate from the whole, the bridge discussion and all that. So that, yeah. that checked, helped me focus a little bit on, on what we're doing, but um, it was, it was great to read all that and have that mm -hmm. as, as documentation. I wasn't that, as up to speed as I ought to be. Yeah, well, I, I really think that stuff as well. And it was really helpful. I, I was learning some of that for the first time. It was good. Likewise, likewise. And now I'm yeah. very excited about the project as a result of reading all of that. <laughs> well, yeah. good. Thank you for taking the time. It's a lot, yeah. a lot of stuff there. Oh, well, that's I guess, okay. I guess my question just being the harbinger of future future issues. I mean, the trees and other projects I know are an issue, you know, taking trees down in order to make it stable. It's sort of a little bit counterintuitive. So there, I was curious if there are any like really negative comments about the trees coming down other than what we heard. Anybody? Um, this is Jonathan. Oh, go ahead. Jonathan, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, these you're you're gonna have to take down a bunch of trees probably if you're cutting back to banks and like yeah. somebody stated before that those trees are gonna fall in anyway eventually yeah um you could also depending on the project you could use those trees within that project to stabilize banks uh like tow wood and stuff yeah so if if that could be a selling point that you know they're going to be used and potentially used in the project too and another thing that would help out, I think, with that is getting some pictures of previous projects. Because when you replant trees, you're going to get, um, you know, some of these river species, native species. Um, they're going to grow back pretty quickly. You're not going to get the huge mature, mature trees really. You know, it's going to take a long time to get that big. But you're going to get some growth where it's not going to look like a clear cut um, in a relatively fast amount of time. So I would think just educating people and showing the pictures of previous projects and what it could look like, I think will help out the narrative with that too. I think that's a good point, yeah. Jonathan. And um, we actually are, most of the people on this call, <laughs> three years ago planted some trees at the Ravana River Company that were just tiny bare root seedlings and they're pretty impressive trees already. I've thought about taking a picture of those and putting them up like this is three years of growth on those trees. Mm -hmm. When they're in that rich soil by the river, they're pretty happy. Mm -hmm. But also I think we have to make sure that we're getting images of the trees from the river. You yeah. know, if you're walking up on the trail, you don't necessarily see what condition the bank and their roots are in. When you view them from the river, you see that they're, they're doomed, mm -hmm. <laughs> some of them at least. Um, and they're if they don't come out in a controlled way, they're gonna come out in an uncontrolled way. You know, I think if you send them to the uh, Meadow Creek restoration, that's a few years yeah. old and it's looking right. really good. It's uh, yeah. it's amazing how quickly that's been transformed. Yeah, big, big think, trees had to come out, but they were doomed anyway. One, one group that I didn't quickly see on the list is I think that the Charlottesville Tree Commission needs to be involved with this project. And that could help moderate some of the concerns about the trees. We actually had Vicki Metcalf on the call, who's on the Tree Commission. She's also an RCA yeah. volunteer, and I am planning to give a presentation to the Tree Commission at their early May meeting. About the right. Good, good, because Peggy Vanier chairs that, and she lives in that neighborhood, so she has a real concern about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had registered for the meeting, but I didn't see that she joined. Um, okay, yeah. that could happen. And I see it looks like Annie Stafford, are you on the call? Yes, I am. Oh, well, welcome. Did you just join us? I, I did. I'm sorry I'm so late. <laughs> you're really oh, late. You're, you're kind of in the debrief. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome to stay, Annie. We're just talking how yeah. the meeting went. So um, okay. thank you for that. 
Yeah. Any other comments? Yeah, thing I mean, to mention? Okay. Go ahead, Jonathan. I think another thing to mention too, if um, with the tree situation is if the banks aren't stabilized, the trees that are falling in are going to fall in, but you also have the potential to lose more trees in the future than you would with the bank stabilization project. And your engineers should be able to tell you um, how far those cuts are going to have to go back and the potential for erosion, how much more that could take in, um, with future storms. Um, you might be able to get kind of that potential, you know, um, pros versus cons thing from the engineers, just to let people know that if nothing's done, then you have the potential to take a lot more trees than, than if, if you just stabilize the banks now and take a few trees. Thank you. That's a good point. Well, I don't want to keep you on a, on a Tuesday night. Anybody else have anything they'd like to add before we close for the evening? Lisa, anything? Uh, well, I first just, I, okay. I just wanted to say, I thought Lisa's presentation was really, really good. And yes. it's, yes. it's and that it, yeah, it was very helpful having read the materials that you presented it very, um, in a really understandable way and it, it came across very, very well, so. Agree. Sorry, the first minute was muted. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you like everybody else. So and the slides didn't happened. work, so, you know, just you started off the bad luck for us. But. Yeah, it was my fault. And actually, for all the Zooms I've been on, I thought this went pretty smoothly, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think person. Mike did a great job. Well, that's, that's kind, but I uh, would not agree necessarily with that, but thank you. No, Mike, uh, I, I really, really appreciate you doing this oh, for us. Um, no worries. Yeah. What, what a, a help. I mean, really, it took so much weight off of my shoulders coming into this meeting, knowing that I didn't have to try to figure all this stuff out. It was, oh. And you were very thoughtful about helping put together the agenda and making sure the meeting was going to run smoothly. And uh, really appreciate that's kind. That. Look, I always like to help. But um, yeah, maybe we'll have somebody else do the technical stuff. I just have bad karma tonight. I don't know. But um, <laughs> it's good. Uh, good that we made it through. And there are certainly comments in the Google Doc and in the chat. So we'll use them. I'm sure we can use them, uh, Lisa, in your grant, grant work. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think the lesson is don't don't do a practice uh, breakout. Just <laughs> I think it yeah yeah Break that, the eight I, or nine you need at first. <laughs> I I agree with you, Jim. Yeah, that probably was one thing that caused a snafu. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, Lisa, you and I talk in a few days, and I get you some information. The recording, I'll send you the file of that as well. The whole thing was re the whole snafu great. was recorded. Yep, there were Definitely some people who wanted to, um, who couldn't participate, who wanted to. And um, Annie, if you would like to chat after tomorrow or something, please just get in touch with me since oh. um, you missed most of the meeting. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're just catching the debrief. <laughs> Probably uh, learning more. Thank you. Lisa, I'd, I'd love to do that. I'll, um, I'll email you. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Well, good to see uh, everybody. Then, okay. Go ahead. I wanted to just make one point and say, first off, thanks for starting to take on this project. It's, we need a lot more of these. <laughs> um, they're very important. And I want to make sure that, you know, this, you're talking about local stuff tonight and local community, but make sure that you outreach us to the larger community. You know, this is a Chesapeake Bay issue too. So mm -hmm. you need to make sure that, you know, that education's out there, you know, how many, the amount of sedimentation that you're, that this project can help keep from going into the Chesapeake Bay. And it can hopefully help get larger cooperators throughout the, the watersheds down to the bay. So I just want to make sure that you're emphasizing not just the local, but a larger scale picture. And, and I think that would help with getting cooperators involved. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. I appreciate you joining in tonight. Um, oh, no problem. Thank know, you so much. Uh, if you don't know Jonathan Harris, he works, he's a fisheries biologist with the Department of Wildlife Resources, and um, 
really worked very closely with Rachel to put together that fish study that really we helped them with in 2019. I remember that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, as a fish biologist, that's the biggest thing we're seeing. One of the biggest things we're seeing in our river systems, our natural systems, is loss of habitat due to sedimentation. Due to sedimentation. So that's kind of the, the hidden pollutant that nobody talks about. Nobody, everybody sees it, but doesn't think it's an issue, um, except for the people that are really out there studying it and looking at it. So it's a, it's a big time issue. And that's why I, I want to say it should be emphasized more of what this project can do and future projects can do, not just to the, for the park area and the local section of Urbana, but all the way down to the Chesapeake Bay. Thanks. Well, I'm good if you're all good for one night. I think I've had enough for the day. I'm <laughs> ready to ready to call it a day. You get a drink now, right? Yeah, yes, thanks it's a, everyone. It's a little late, but thank <laughs> you yeah. for for that. And thank we'll talk, you we'll talk everybody for helping. Yes, thank you all. See you all soon. Yeah, thank you all. Bye bye. Right. Good night. Bye. Night. bye. bye. Hey, Bob, I'm going to save Mike. the chat. Yeah, I'm just saving the chat, et cetera. And okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Have a good one. See you later. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye.